And the front grow. <laughs> right, Anton, when you're ready. Front grow sick. Yeah. Hi, nice Hi Anton, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Look, uh, we'll get to the football in a moment, but it's obviously been a difficult week mm. sporting-wise for the City and Nottingham. So I'm just wondering sort of how it's been after the, the mm. passing of uh, Adam Johnson. Well, as you said, um, really tragic story and, and, and situation that, that un unfolded, um, you know, from a, from a game, game of sport. So we were, um, we were in the hotel before the Liverpool game when, when we found out and it was obviously the the, the talk of the uh, um, of the meeting room and everybody was you know shocked and saddened players staff and uh, just as I said it was a really really sad situation so um, um, as a club we, we you know we want to um, show our respects on, the, on, on Sunday and I know we got some things planned and and in times of difficulty and this is obviously tragic what's happened you know this is a city that does really come come together and obviously in a, in a sporting sense i know a lot of the sporting clubs around the city us included have, have really sort of come together and, and shown the the rightful respect so um yeah heart goes out to to adam's family and beyond that his teammates and and staff and all the people that he's worked with and um you know we we send our our best and our sympathy and um, as I said uh, on Sunday as a club hopefully we, we can we can do our little bit in, in making him proud Thank you. Um, Steve let's get on to the game mm. first off just obviously it's all right. we all know the sort of the recent run of form just wondering how happy you are with mm. how the team's playing and the, and the progress yeah I think um, you know you, you, you live in the moment obviously and you you you, you uh, reflect on the last game and try and get ready for, for the next game and that's the, the normal cycle and if you don't win a game you're disappointed and obviously the opposite when, when you win and quickly have to focus so I think alongside that you also have to sort of take a deep breath and think about um, how we're doing in general and um, you know we are in a much better place than where we were this time last year we're definitely in a better place than what we were two years ago and when you think like that then you realise that even though sometimes you can be disappointed with with a result or a performance, but actually, you know, on the whole, the club is 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 making progress, and um, um, I don't think we should lose lose sight of that. So, of course, we want to win every game that we that we play, and we'll be disappointed when when that doesn't happen. But I don't think we should lose sight of the, how much progress we've made over the last couple of years, um, how much more we need to grow. Uh, as a club to really be competitive at this this level you can't do that uh, after just being in here for for 12 months of Premier League and, and we have to appreciate that but we're giving her a good go and for me that's the exciting bit that's the best bit of the challenge is that we know we've got a lot of growing to do as a club as a team uh, and everything around that but that's why we're here you know it's been a challenge for the last two years but a brilliant challenge and then that doesn't continue so um so we're, we, you know, we we we're, we're tackling it head on, and when you're doing it at a club like this, where it's full of great support and passion and history, then you know it makes it even more exciting. So, yeah. So like I said, we we'll always be wanting to win the next game and disappointed when we don't, but we're also you know not going to lose sight of how much the club has grown over the last couple of years because it's been, you know, an incredible couple of years really. So um, we want to work really hard to to continue that progress. Yeah, you talk about the excitement. The fans are obviously excited about the potential of this mm. team. The owner's excited about the potential development of this team and this club. Does that bring an ex, you know, an increase of pressure? Does it increase on you? Well, I'm excited. I share. I share that that uh, excitement and that ambition, um, but also realistic about where we're at. You know, and that's that's the the bit that we have to work on every day and not look too far ahead. And with the players, it's just about committing to the way we want to go about our work and. How we want to how we want to work, how we want to play, and um, you know, and and the culture we want around around the club, knowing that if we get every day right, it gives us a chance of 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 growing, as we said, to to really be sustainable at this at this level. And um, like I said, it's only our second season back in in the Premier League. We feel like we're in better shape than what we were last season, so that means that we've made progress. But we're also not going to get carried away with um, with trying to go too fast and or being disappointed if it doesn't feel like that because um you know that that would be un, unrealistic so like i said we are really committed to um our work we really want to do well uh, we want to progress from 
uh, last season. At the moment, that's currently the situation. So we've got to keep that keep that going. And if we're in that same place at the end of the season, then again, it'll be another productive year for, for the club and it will be the third one on, on the run. So, But a lot of work, a lot of games, a lot of ups, definitely some downs. And um, we, we won't get too high or too low on the journey and, and uh, keep going. Well, you come up against the, the flying department. Mm. How impressed have you been with them this season? Well, you have to be, you know, in terms of the results and, and the form and, and everything around that. So you, you can only say positive things about, about Villa and we know it's going to be a really tough challenge and is a really good example of a club that's been in the Premier League for a few years and has have taken the time to, to really look like they're going to become something. So there's a good reference point there. So it's, it's a tough game, and, but um, it's one that we're really looking forward to. I think it's one that we need in terms of the, 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 the challenge at home. And um, for sure, we have to be ready, but... You know, it's been a, a really good week. Um, uh, we're really clear about how we want to go about the game. Um, it will always be about us in, in the amount of success that we get in the game and um, we'll be looking forward to it. Thank you. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Ivan. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, just on Villa, what, what is their greatest threat at the moment, do you think? Well, I think at the moment uh, it's, it's, um, it's probably the... On, on the back of form is or good form is always comes confidence and uh, momentum and all of these things that we all strive for, which you you really only get from from really positive results. So I think so we are getting up at a time where where confidence will be high and they're, they're very much in sync with how you know I want them to play and the, the tactics that they they adhere to. You can see that it's very clear. So we get that, but you know this is the Premier League. These are the type of challenges that you you get. We've got to we've got to be our own. Um, version of ourselves and hopefully a, a good one and um, and take the game to, to, to Villa. Recent history, by comparison, it's not dissimilar to, to Forest. Villa, Forest have both had domestic success in the recent past and European success around about the same sort of time mm. in, in moderate history going back. Are they an inspiration to you, a, a model to follow, if you like? I just said in, in the previous question that um, they, they are a good example of, of a team that has slowly um, improved over the, the course of time. Um, I'm sure uh, without studying it too much, there's been some ups and some downs along the way. And at the moment, they're, they're doing re really well, they're playing in, in, uh, in Europe as, as well. So um, you can see that the progress has, has been good. So as I said before, there's definitely a reference point there with Villa that a little bit of patience and a little bit of realism along the way that you know you do get better over the course of time. Um, and so it's not a bad one to look at, but we, we've got to be focused on ourselves. We're, we're you know, like I said, a few years behind them in terms of status in the Premier League and, and feeling the, the benefits of just being in the league and the, the, you know, the revenue that comes in and how it allows you to build. Um, but if we can sustain that for a few years, then hopefully we can continue to progress as well. And that's what I said before, you know, the last couple of years, really all we have done is, is progress and improved and got better. And we're really committed to, to continuing that. Again, long enough, you know, there's a million opinions out there, and a million. There's more than that. <laughs> That's just today. <laughs> That's just today. Uh, but what do you say to those that look in, have an opinion, uh, seem impatient for the club to go quicker, faster, to, to greater success? Well, we, I think our strength since we've, over the last couple of years, um, has always been just to really think internally, and sometimes I use the term about. You know, staying in our bubble and, and not trying to let anything come in, and that's when we've had um, good good moments as well. Because let's not forget, although we know we're disappointed, we've not won for a couple of games. We're, we're still in a much better position than what we were last year, and as I said, the year before that. So, so it's actually quite a positive place to be at the moment. Definitely the training ground for sure. Um, through through the last couple of years, through all the good things that we've done, which completely outweigh um, the negative things. Um, we've just, as I said, carried on with our work, not got too high, definitely not got too low, committed to what we believe in and, and trusting that that will serve us well over the course of time and that doesn't change. So glass half full, glass half empty approach. You're five glass half full. And, well, you're actually, for those that say you're five points above relegation, you're actually five points off the top eight. What yeah. differences do you need to, to in, include in, in your approach to tip the balance towards mm. the... The top looking yeah, I think I think yeah, it's a, a you know it is a good way of looking at it because 
the sort of you look at maybe not the last game against Liverpool because that's Anfield and everyone knows about the the bad luck we had with, with player availability at the top end, end of the pitch which made it even more difficult but the games before that you know we, we could and should have, have taken more points and we've talked about the reasons for, for not doing that and I'm not going to go over it again but if we had then you know, um, you know, it would we would be you know, in a much stronger position in, in the league. Although we wouldn't have got carried away with that because. So the answer to your question is is just the marginal gains, and and sort of really trying to not let go of the small opportunities that come your way every every week. And if that's managing to get a, a good away win against Palace and not to throw away a lead against Luton, then they're good examples of the difference that they can they can make. But we're also not, as I said, going to get carried away, good or bad with either of them things, if they've been positive or negative, because that's just not, not the way. We've got to look at things in general. I repeat, the club has been on a massive upward stride the last couple of years. Um, you know, I know um, we'll, people won't lose sight of that, um, even though like, after a good result, we won't get too high. After a poor result, we won't get too low. We have to continue to, con- um, to work hard to keep that progression going. And if at the end of this season, we can say there's progress again, then it'll be a brilliant three years, you know, and, and knowing that there's still a lot more to come, which is the natural process of time. But day by day, game by game, that's our work as a, as a coaching staff and as a, as a team, um, hoping that, you know, the work's good enough to, to continue that progression. You too. Thank you. No, no. Mm. Yeah, Ty was, you know... Um, I'm not going to hide hide behind it because obviously we've seen that you know he hasn't been available. He's 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 a player that we have to manage. He's in a bit of a complex situation with his uh, his injury, and um, um, it's an ongoing one, and it will be for for a little while. So it's it's frustrating for him more than anybody else because you know he was doing so well, and um, this has really held him back. And uh, it's not been as simple as he's back training and he's fully fit. It's something that's going to be. A managing pro process for a, a little bit of time now, so um, we'll see if he's available for the weekend. Uh, we hope he is, but it could could go either way, and um, we'll, we'll we'll see. Um, Danilo's back in training, um, not quite in full training yet, but not far away. Um, so so he will hopefully feature in the in the coming coming weeks, um, and uh, everybody else is um, is the same. I think injuries. Yeah, we didn't pick up anything on the. Um, on the weekend, a um, couple of illnesses in the camp. Um, yeah, but we, we were as we were, really. Yeah. Do you think it will be complete now settled down? So 10 games, 10 mm. games in. Mm. How is like team spirit and food? Yeah, team spirit's brilliant. And I, I think that's been the best bit, um, certainly since we've been in the Premier League with the amount of new players uh, that, have, that have joined us since the return to the Premier League. Um, last season was talked about a lot, but even this se- season, there's so many new players in. That's one thing that's been been great, really. There's never been questions of real togetherness amongst amongst the guys. There's a bit of a common ground, really. There's so many new players. They've always they've had that shared experience of of coming here as as, as a new player and probably accelerated relationships quicker than maybe you normally normally would. Um, I guess the no, I won't say the downside, but the the watch out with all of that is is like you said is 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 trying to become a team on the pitch, uh, and that's that's the, the the transition that we're we're in. You know, we're really trying to find a settled team now. Where the players can build connections, and you know that that's been scuppered at times with with injuries and and form as well. And naturally, players will 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 you know be left out or will pick up little injuries and and things like that. So. But we, we really want to try and settle everything down now and, um, and build connect, good connections and relationships on, on the pitch that can really help you then, you know, going into these games that, against teams that, that have that, you know. So, um, so yeah, we're, go, we're going through that and um, it's, it's, um, some of it's going as, as we'd like. Other bits are taking a bit longer, which is probably why, you know, the, you've seen in the performances, some of the, some of the performances have been or parts of the performance have been excellent and other times you, there's been a little bit of a, a moment where okay it does look like it needs a bit of building but I think that's normal um, what we've got to do is keep going keep looking at the good things that we're doing um, address the things that need to get better realise where we are on the journey that's a big one for us knowing that it's going to take time but 
be competitive to pick up uh, as many points as we can and win games because that's 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 what we want. You know, that's certainly at home. I think somebody told me since October, I think we. I think we're unbeaten 17 out of 19 home games. I think there's only City and Liverpool have, have bettered that. And that's because, you know, we, we've really engaged with the fans. They've really engaged with us. We've tried to do our best and they've got behind us for sure. And, and that's been the strength of, 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 of the club at home. So we've really got, to, we've really got to hone in on them things, see that there's loads of good things that's happening at the club and keep going. <laughs> mm. Yeah. The expectation maybe yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know what the expectations are really because um, everybody will have a different opinion on, on, on that. I think what, what I have to do is, for sure, there's nobody more ambitious than, 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 than me. Um, not saying anybody's any less, but there certainly won't be anybody more ambitious than, than me in terms of um, what we want to do as a, as a team and as a coaching staff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, but I also realise that there's parts to fulfilling ambition, to fulfilling potential and there's a journey. And, and for me, that's the best bit. There's always been the best bit here. There's been is what, what we can do as a, as a club. And, um, and like I said, you know, you, you lose a game against Liverpool or draw a game at home. And of course, no, nobody will be more disappointed than, than me if things weren't as, as they should be. But I've also got to be the one and go, OK, well, hang on a minute. Look how far we've come. Look at, you know, where we're at. But excitingly, look at where we can go, you know, and, and that's the bit that I keep reinforcing to the players that they've got to continue to work hard, they've got to keep going. Um, you know, this could be an important era for, for the football club and the two years already, and we want to keep that going, you know. So more than anything, it's really exciting and we're really confident, really committed and can't wait for the next game. Mm. Yeah. No, well, no Premier League game is easy, but one one thing that we've had through, um, you know, good, bad, middle of the road performances here is unconditional support. And you know, I've spoken quite openly that um, you know we've seen other teams and clubs where, respectfully, I say this, where the atmosphere and the support hasn't been similar to what what we had or have. Sorry, I should say, you know, I say had. I'm referring to last season where where some of the runs that we went on last year and where we might have been in the league doesn't normally equate to the support that we were receiving on, on, on a match day. And, and in the end, that, that was a massive help to you know, finishing where, where we did in the league. So everybody knows that. As I often always say, we've got to do um, more than our best on the pitch to, to make sure that we, we earn the, the support because we know that we get it and we're very fortunate to get it. So we'll never take it for granted, certainly not entitled by it. Um, we've got to continue to, to do our best, you know, to try and, and, and earn it because when we get it, which we do unconditionally, it's a massive help. And I think, the, I think our fans are really proud of the role that they played and are playing because in some ways it is, you know, in, in the parts of the league that we've been in, it set us apart. You know, and um, I know that we will be doing everything to keep that going. Thanks, Natalie. Hey, Jake. Yeah, man. Just a couple of follow-ups. I know someone that we've spoken about um, in, the, in the recent past, but Sangaro's made the shortlist for the African Player mm. of, the, of the Year award. Just wanted to get your thoughts on his impact and, uh, yeah, how he's been settling in for that. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, it's, it's always a, um, a great recognition to be award, um, nominated for an award like that, we obviously have our equivalents in um, in, in UEFA. Um, so um, so great recognition for him. Obviously, most of that time he was he was playing uh, in Holland, but now he's here and um, off the pitch. He's he's really settled in. He's a good boy. Works really hard. Um, I think we've seen some really good signs of, of w what he he can and is going to do going forward. And like we've seen so many of these these boys that have come into the Premier League for the first time regardless of where they've come from, experience, um, f f uh, price tags, fees, whatever you want to call it, expectation. You know, Premier League takes getting used to and um, some get there quicker than others. Um, and um, for sure, you know, he's, um, he's on that journey, but we're really happy with him because 
He's a really good boy in terms of his work ethic. He's really engaged, and um, you know, you know, he's he's going to be really important for us and the club going forward. Like you say, he's on he's on that journey and he's very new to the club. But do you sense that there's still a lot more to come from? Do you sense there's a lot? Of, uh, a lot I think there's a, I think there's so much more to come from the team. I think there's so much more to come from every player, um, because that is the makeup of the squad. That is where we're at. We're 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 not a a team. Um, at a club with, with loads of like games and seasons together as a group, you know we just haven't had the opportunity to do that. So, so I think it's it's, it's a question for um, or an opinion for for every player and the team in general that you know hopefully we can you know stand the test of time and really becoming a team and, and building them connections and then relationships whether it's in the back line or midfield or and and uh, and because that will help in games. So. Um, I think that's a generic question for everybody about that's where we just are with our journey. We're not at the start, but we definitely know we're near being established with a lot of these teams that we come up against are. Um, but that's where we want to get to. And for me, as I say, that's the exciting bit of the challenge. Certainly as a coaching challenge. And, um, you know, we're really committed to, to becoming that because if we do, it means we, we'll be making progress, which is, which is what we want to do. We've progressed from last season, definitely progressed from two seasons. So let's hope we can keep it going. Thanks, Jake. Hi, Mum. Jonathan. Hey, John. I think we got a decision to to make with every every position. I think you asked the question because Matt obviously made a mistake for um, the third goal uh, against Liverpool, which was a real unfortunate one and one that gets highlighted uh, even more because of the, the type of mistake and the um, uh, and the position he plays and. Uh, and it results in in a in a goal, um, so I think that's your question, really, uh, and I appreciate that. Um, it was a mistake for sure, but I think if we weigh up, um, you know, all of the good things Matt's done compared to, you know, mistakes for goals, then the positives completely outweigh the negatives. And uh, Matt held his hands up um, for for the mistake because he's that type of guy. Um, it wasn't the only mistake on, on the day and there was mistakes made the game before and there'll be mistakes made in the future because that's just what um, we all do. It, you know, we do good things and we make mistakes as well. Um, but um, but he, he and we will, will grow from that and get better. Um, and also we, we want to be a, a team and a coaching staff um, that when people have made mistakes is support each other, you know, and, and not criticise too much, not... Um, um, you know, sort of isolate people. We want to bring people closer together because in the end, everyone's going to make mistakes. So, um, but Matt's trained brilliant this week. As I said, we reviewed the game for what it was, including that that goal. Um, but, you know, the, the, the strength of anybody really is how they, they bounce back from, from, you know, mistakes or setbacks. And um, I've no doubt that Matt and other people, you know, will do in the future as well. Uh, Woody, Woody's, yeah, obviously has a hamstring injury and um, I don't think we'll see him before the international break, that's for sure. And then obviously it's two weeks after that. So uh, I think the next time we'll see him will be, will be after the international break. Jonathan, cameras off, please. Written section embargo to 10.30.